last night was tough to watch, and I watched all of it. He, I don't understand why he took a lot of the shots he did in the fourth quarter. Uh, they had a chance to beat the Celtics last night. Russ did a little too much, didn't let the game come to him, forced himself into the game, did the kind of things that uh, our friend Colin, Cap- uh, Colin Cowherd loves to criticize him for. He'd be having a parade right now. Yeah. He'd be in his... So I, I, I do the last two losses, and I know he set out the first two games, I blame Russ. Oh, let's go back to last season. It's amazing. That's the headline that Russell Westbrook takes bad shots. I mean, <laughs> I mean think about it. In, in, in a series ending game against Utah, remember that last year? 43 shots. Dude jacked up 19 threes. He made a few of them, but still respect that you're doubling the output of your second fiddle in Paul George. And that's just a lot to deal with. But he, Russell Westbrook has that switch. Uh, we see it in his eyes, that intensity. It's a gift and it's a curse. I don't think anybody plays the game harder than Russell Westbrook, so I love that. But at the same time, that comes at a cost, which is that's the curse. When he turns it on, doesn't know how to turn it off. We're talking about an MVP, an oh. all-star MVP, All right. mm-hmm. perennial all-star, who's having a, a, a tough three games of shooting the ball. He came back late as the season started, came back without him. So Russ is going to shoot himself into this year and get his, get his groove going. Yes, last night was his fault. They were up. They did a great job in the first half of the game. Last night was not hard to watch. The second half was hard to watch. But he's going to find his way. He's going to find his groove. They're going to find a way to get this thing going. They're the most dangerous um, team without a win right now. And that team is going to be in the playoff hunt. That team is going to be a playoff team. And Russ is going to find his way. Russ has always found his way through tough spots. He's not always going to be the greatest in shot selection, but he's going to find his way to help that team win, and I'm not worried about them at all. And that's the problem, because he always gets to find his way no matter how long it takes, and it doesn't take long usually for him, but OKC enables that. OKC by location, uh, OKC by the fact that, hey, we're not going to win a championship. This is not a championship roster. Uh, The way that they play, the style, it's not going to work. It hasn't worked. So this is what OKC says. All right, let him do what he has to do. You know why? We're not into getting the hardware. We're into selling these tickets. We're into selling entertainment. We're into relevant. that we're still nationally relevant because we have a superstar on our team. But if they were in the business of winning exclusively, I don't think Westbrook would be allowed to do all these things. What would you have to, rather him do? He's not great off the ball. He's not. Mm. A, he's a, he's a good passer. But he's a scorer. He puts a lot of pressure on defenses. And you have to be aggressive to be effective. He puts the pressure on. And Paul George is a shooter. Paul George is in a good rhythm right now. Yes. So if we get Russell in the same place Paul George is in, I think they can find a way to work together. And Russ is always trying to be a better basketball player. He's not stubborn in the point of, I'm just going to be me and you guys just figure it out. No, I think he's trying to figure out himself and trying to adjust to be able to win because I think ultimately his goal is to win a championship. I don't think he's happy with winning an MVP. I think he's trying to be a better person and a better basketball player, a better leader, and working on those things because I know him as a person. I know mm-hmm. that he's, he has the foundation of being a good person who wants to win. And, and I think Definition of on. insanity is doing the same thing <laughs> and expecting different results. Yesterday, I had a double cheeseburger over at Moe's. That's my dog. Didn't help my diet out. Uh, <laughs> you know? And so I look at Russell Westbrook, and again, the three-point shooting. He shot less than 30% last year, and he's coming back doing it again. And, and I go back to Marcellus's point about he, he plays the hardest. At some point, Russ, we want to be able to say, you also played the smartest game. And that's where he struggles. He plays very, very hard, and people respect that. He comes out every night and he gives it. Sometimes, Russ, let us come on and say, man, you played the smartest game I've ever seen. But we outsmarted everybody. We tend to look at him and his skill set and always pick him apart about what he doesn't do. But have we taken advantage and looked at his past and how he's grown over the years? So we, if, he's, if we've looked at him from the beginning to where he is now, we can know that he's going to evolve into a better basketball player as he's always done. So he's going to take the bad parts about himself because we all know the bad parts about, it, about, about ourselves and, our, and, and what we do in our craft. Yes. He, know, he, know, he looks in the mirror and understands himself. He knows that th- these things. So he's looking at it and trying to make himself a better basketball player. I don't don't think he's stubborn in that fact. When I went to Moe's yesterday, I knew I shouldn't have a double (laughs) cheeseburger. That's your decision. I knew I shouldn't have a double cheeseburger. Give me that double cheeseburger. Let me get that. Put that bacon on there, too. (laughs) Number three combo. Let me get it. You know what? All I want to say about OKC or Russell Westbrook team is that they play greater 
than a sum of its parts. I mean, that's what, like what you're saying, you're smarter. Like, he has it, and he can enable Paul George and others to get it, but it just seems I, like they're a little less. But I, I, when you have a weapon like Russell Westbrook, I think they're their biggest thing is to find the, the parts around him to work with him. Just like Allen Iverson, case yeah. in point. The way they went to the finals and had a chance to win a, cha- a championship against the Lakers is they found the parts that worked best around him because he was such a dynamic force. Yes, AI didn't pass the ball with the best of them, but he could score and he could put a lot of pressure on defenses. And he and Russ is in that same set of a guard who puts pressure on defenses, and you have to find guys that complement him. And they're they're trying to find the right mix of guys to complement and make up for his deficiency. All right, let me move to Lonzo Ball. <laughs> and I was somebody that thought Lonzo would be a flop. And I got to eat my words here. And, you know, you got to chew a little slowly when you eat your own yeah, words. Right, right. So, yeah, Lonzo looked pretty good. Yeah, digest that mose first before you eat these words, right? Because you're talking about my boy, Lonzo Ball. And man, I told y'all from day one, this dude had an all-time historical campaign as a rookie, except one glaring issue. The shooting efficiency. So you That's go, a big that's one. A big, <laughs> oh, oh, it's a big one as a rookie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, a I, you know how many greats yeah. that took time yes. to actually evolve as shooters yeah, in the I, league? I, I do understand that. Yeah, yeah I know you do. Marcellus, Marcellus, yes, you, never, you never heard what I nicknamed Lonzo's shot. Oh. You know, George Gervin had the finger roll last year. Lonzo introduced the fingers crossed. He was shooting across <laughs> his fingers and hope it went in. That was not a small problem. Throwing up the hip-hop array? The fin- oh, you know what? But <laughs> respect to this, see, you have forgotten the greatness of him. So for all the haters out there named Jason Whitlock, uh, <laughs> Lonzo Ball went out there yesterday and reminded us of what he did in college, the shot is back, the step back three. When Lonzo brings this to his game, when this is a part of his equation, everything else is there. Five steals last night. He's a great guard rebounder. The guy sees the court, pace of play. There's nothing wrong with the guy if he can continue to do what he's already shown us in the past. I agree with you that yeah. Lonzo is looking like a starting point guard, yes. but there are a couple things in this equation. Number one, Pops has taken a step back and allowed his talent to speak for himself. Mm. And we haven't seen Pops this year. Yes, yeah, and right, allowing big. his son to concentrate and disseminate through the minutia of, of basketball. Like, he's, he's able to play, be confident, and go out there and let his, his play um, speak for itself. Then the, comp- the combination of the Lakers' experiment right now with bringing Rajon Rondo in and creating competition in practice and giving him something to strive for by competing against Rajon Rondo has made him better. Mm-hmm. Now he's more aggressive. Now he's concentrating on the defensive end. I think that's come from practicing against a, a champion in Rajon Rondo. But if Lonzo is the starter, that makes them a better basketball team because there is no backup point guard better than Rajon Rondo. Yeah, and I think point. that is a good sacrifice for the team. They're working. He brings the necessary energy to start the games. Lonzo is out there defending. Bron had a great comment about Lonzo. Like, we take time and we're always dissecting the kid and telling what he's not doing and how he's not shooting the ball. But can we take the time to see what he is doing? He's defending well. He's making great decisions. He's bringing energy. And he's taking tough shots. And, and he's playing with confidence. He's attacking the basket. He's out there leading. The kid is doing his job. Very, very quickly, I have one other question. Is Kyle Kuzma better than Brandon Ingram? <laughs> I, no, no. Come it's, on. It's, quick, it's, we got to be it's, quick. It's a tough question, but Come is he on. better than him? He's different and better for that starting lineup. I think if, mm. if Brandon Ingram goes to the bench, I think they don't have any – fall off with, with their bench. You have Bron, LeBron James can come out and Brandon can come in and play at the high level at the small forward spot. I think they complement each other well because you see Kuz pushing Bron off the ball when he gets a rebound and pushing it. I think that's what LeBron needs. People to make plays and have enough confidence to, to say, Bron, I got to get out the way. You just run with me. This sounds crazy and desperate to me. There Four first-round picks over seven years for Jimmy Butler, because you let Trevor Reza go, or I, I don't know how or Trevor Reza got out of there, this seems crazy to me. It's desperate, but what's wrong with being desperate? I, I hate the negative connotation of desperation. Uh, you know, Because it might not work. And it might work. Uh, think about it. This team was up 3-2 against the Golden State Warriors, who seemed desperate one time when they went out there and had to go get a KD because... Oh, second... that wasn't desperate. That's a home run. Well, it is a home run, and, and we knew that would work out. You don't think this will work out, but to them, with an agent Chris Paul and James Harden there going out with the hamstring and having his own health concerns at times, 
We got to push all the chips in the middle. The L.A. Rams are doing that right now in football. Hey, y'all talk about tomorrow. <laughs> talk about it then. I need to get over this hump. And they were that close last year. Why not mortgage it to try and get Jimmy Butler? When you have it a shot at a championship, you have to play for the right now. You have to play for this window that you have your stars in. Chris Paul is an aging superstar. We know this. James Harden is an aging superstar. So these next four years... There's nothing in the bottom of the the lot, uh, bottom of the NBA draft that's going to help me be a better basketball team. Jimmy Butler automatically helps me be a better basketball team. These assets that they're sending, they're only taking the assets that they have. They don't have any young talent that they can throw at him and, and at Tibbs and see if that, that will entice him. They have draft picks, and Tibbs can take a combination of those draft picks and go find something that that he needs in in free agency or in the trade market coming up. So it could work for them. I see what they're doing, but it can backfire like it did with the Brooklyn Nets. I, I would rather give up four first-round picks to move to the Eastern Conference <laughs> than give up four to get Jimmy Butler and still have to face Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and Klay Thompson and Boogie Cousins well, those, in the West. Those four, those four first-round picks are going to be, what, 24, right. 25, low. 26, they're if low. you do what you're supposed to. If you're betting on Chris Paul and James Harden and Clint Capella, like, they're going to be bottom. They're going to be bottom of the first round. And what have you gotten in that bottom of the first round? Yeah, maybe a Rudy Gobert, but that's like a diamond in the rough. And you're going to find somebody at the bottom of the draft. Oh, no, I'm sorry, because the Lakers have done Kyle it. Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma. Josh Hart. And Josh Hart. So you can find some things, but... The luck has been to find a guy that you have to try, try, try to help become a star. Mm-hmm. And, and he, you'll have one ready to play right now, and right they have now. a window that's right now. Ready, Thank you, Dante. Thank you.